So today I'm doing a pregnancy update. So what's going on guys is uh, we had a really ton of stuff going on for us. We moved and uh, I'm pregnant and uh, we had to find a house and everything. So we are a little late with the updates. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna record a um, first a first trimester pregnancy update and then a 24 weeks that I am today exactly 24 weeks pregnant. Um, so the thing is, things just happened a while ago and they are very fresh in my mind and I think there is some special points that um, they really caught my attention and uh, I didn't expect things to be like that so I think it's really nice to share this experience of my first trimester even though I'm a little late on recording it, okay? Uh, yeah, so that's it, let's start then. I have here my telephone with my notes in case I forget about something, I'll have a look. So I was uh, writing down everything that was happening uh, during um, all the pregnancy, I'm doing that. So if something, you know, I'll remember, I'll remember. <laughs> okay, so let's go. So first thing I remember uh, in my first update, I told you I was having these cramps and uh, uh, they start lessening on the second month and then with the time they just faded away and that was good because at the beginning at my first month every time i felt the cramps i thought like oh it's the baby i can feel the baby and i thought that was cool but then um about in my second month i start thinking oh that's not nice maybe something is wrong with the baby when i have the cramps so it was really nice to have them fading away and then finally stopping because i was starting to have this new mindset that maybe there was a problem or something um, so even though they were not that strong and my doctor said it was fine uh, i was worried so it was good that that happened sore breaths kept all the way from the beginning <laughs> and uh, I had some bleeding gums during that time but the most important thing for me that I think you know when someone is pregnant you hear stuff like oh um, she's having nausea or morning sickness or oh she's a little more tired than normal I never understood how deep are these things uh, I know everyone is different, but for me, it wasn't a little bit tired. It is exhausting. There was a part uh, during my first trimester, I would say second and third month, I had to take a nap at some part of the day because I was literally like so tired and exhausted. And I'm not used to sleeping during the daytime. It's not even something that I like to do. Uh, and but I was just so exhausted but so exhausted that it was something that I needed to do and then uh, when I was uh, really busy and I couldn't do it then it was like 7 p.m. I can die right now you know it's like I just needed to go straight to sleep and just have the most rest I could get so this was uh, one thing and um, even if I took that nap, I would be so tired the whole day, just exhausted, you know, but really exhausted. And every day during like two months. Yeah, so that was uh, surprising. I expected to maybe be more tired than normal, but I didn't understood how much more tired it would be. I think um, we don't understand when pregnant women say they're tired how how deep it is you know how tired they are we just think yeah a little tired it's really really strong overtaking feeling and uh, the other thing is the morning sickness first of all for me there was no morning you know it was a whole day thing every day and it was so strong like i was hungry I was starving all the time and I couldn't eat anything. Um, 
when I was on my third month, I discovered that the smell, uh, it was um, something that aggravated this situation. So I would just like pinch my nose, grab a piece of potato and stuff in my mouth or like place the plate really far away from me so I could eat something. And the funny thing it was like the only thing I could eat was potatoes, okay? Doesn't matter how they were cooked, potatoes, okay? It was just, I can't eat anything but potatoes. And, um, and I could eat french fries for a while, but then after a while it was like no oil, you know? And then only like more plain potatoes, like baked or, um, yeah, no, no oil, no frying. Uh, so uh, that was interesting uh, I was so I was at my mom's house and they had a scale at the kitchen and I would be like oh let me see how much weight I gained so far in my pregnancy and then I start noticing I was losing weight instead of gaining weight mm, I was a little worried at first about that but then my doctor said it was fine it was normal it was okay so I end up losing um, a little more than two kilograms in my first trimester and yeah no uh, weight gaining in the first trimester opposite because I was just so nauseous the whole time and um, I could eat other things as well like kale and with lots of vinegar and uh, some sweets for some reason, like, I hated sweets so much, that is something I usually love, but I couldn't imagine eating sweet stuff, but some things, it would be okay, so I don't know, you know, you just, you just do wherever it is possible because you're so hungry and you cannot eat. And another thing I could eat, it was bread. So that was a problem, I tell you why. One. I'm not used to eating bread <laughs> and uh, two, I would eat loads of white bread as well as the whole wheat. So not that healthy, you know, and uh, but uh, thankfully by the end of my third trimester, um, this feeling started fading away. But the first uh, trimester guys, it was really like exhausting and uh, not being able to eat almost anything and um, you know it, it's a, don't get me wrong it's not because i couldn't eat anything that i wouldn't because i knew some stuff were really important for the baby so i would force some stuff down uh, healthy food of course and uh, to make sure i was getting enough nutrition but at the same time i couldn't eat that much so you know I did my best, I did what I could, my doctor said it was fine, it is normal, so it's okay. Let me see what else, let me check my notes. Okay, so another thing was, um, we were in China, we flew to Thailand. I was pregnant at the time, but I didn't know yet. And then um, from Thailand, we had to fl fly to Brazil, right? Um, we decided to stop on the way in Italy to make the trip easier for me so I could like sleep in a hotel bed and eat some nice food and just had that break in the middle of this big trip. We were so wrong. <laughs> I tell you what, I think it would it would have been really easier if we just, you know, straight came directly to Brazil. What happened is we stayed this um, two days in Milan one night and it was so hard on me. The fly was terrible. I felt extremely nausea all the time and um, it was when my nausea started. So before that I didn't really uh, was preparing anything that I, I could eat or something because I wasn't expected, expecting that. And then my nausea started really strong by this time and I was in the plane so I didn't have m m many options. So they would bring me vegan food at the plane of course, but tomato sauce is something that I could handle in my first trimester, okay? I could handle tomato sauce at all the smell, the taste, it was like, uh-uh, and it's something that I usually like, but who knows, right? 
and um, so um, I was extremely nauseous I, I was extremely sick and uh, tired and hungry starving then we arrived to the airport I had that empty stomach oh lord that was a nice trip into the city I tell you that and then when we finally got to our hotel you have to go out to eat you know it's not like you're at home or something it was really hard on me I was extremely exhausted and um, it was hard at the same time of course it's wonderful being in Italy I love Italy and um, we did some babe shopping uh, I can uh, show you a haul if you're interested and uh, we did some babe shopping we ate some nice stuff uh, but it was very very tiring and very very hard for me so I wouldn't recommend you to do a short stop unless you're gonna stop for a week or something so if it is short time and uh, you're in the same situation I would recommend you to just go straight where you're going um, by that time I was craving broccoli and vinegar so everywhere we went to eat in Milan I was like oh do you have broccoli blah 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 I ate it like three times in a day until now I'm not that big fan of broccoli anymore I know it's gonna go away but you know it, it was just like I just wanted it so much and then I had it and then I hated it and it was the same thing with morning glory while we were in Thailand I would eat those morning glories every single day and by um, I, on our last two days when we were in Bangkok one day I just woke up and I was like don't even show me a picture of morning glory you know so it was just the right time to leave it <laughs> and I couldn't handle um, curries and coconut milk anymore just suddenly all these strong flavors it was a no-go and um, so on that term luckily we were living in Thailand because the food there is very rich in flavor it is delicious I love Thai food but on that moment I couldn't handle that I needed really plain tasteless food that's the truth okay another thing about cravings was um, okay we arrived in Brazil there was not much I could eat um, when we talk about craving I thought when you craved something as pregnant it was something like you really wanted to eat something in my situation it was more as a this is the only thing I'm able to eat it's not like I desire that is it is the only thing I can eat the other stuff is just unbearable so I'm not sure if this is the same for everyone but this was definitely the case for me and uh, one thing that I really craved and I really missed soon as I was in Brazil it was Chinese food I just wanted some really really spicy food and some bouts and some Cantonese cold noodles and um, Chinese food you know I just wanted to go to my uh, regular restaurants in China and eat my nice spicy 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 Chinese food I wanted to drop the whole can of spice in my food and just eat it that, that's what I wanted and um, as a vegan in my city that is not a really big city uh, it was not easy to find what I wanted so it was very hard the style of spicy i wanted it is like they just don't have it in here you know i was able to find some bautza in a vegetarian chinese restaurant and uh, some rice noodles and then i bought lots of spicy and tried to make some spicy but it's just not the same if you if you if you feel me send me sichuan spicy please if you're from China, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> if you're from China, there's no Sichuan spice in Brazil. Send me a pack of Sichuan spice, please. I need it. I still need it. Okay, so it, it is for me, even though uh, the most of the cravings and the sickness is stopped by now. Oh, I need my Chinese spice, you know what I mean? It is really hard. <laughs> okay so one nice thing i'm doing is um i really wanted to do that i had planned that and then uh, when we were in thailand my sister said 
hey, I want to give you a gift. Would you be interested in that? And I say, yes, absolutely. That is something I want. She gave me this pregnancy diary. So um, it is in Portuguese, this one, but it's basically a week by week guide. So they have like some uh, tips and they tell you what's happening with the baby and um, the, you know, the baby is the size of a peach kind of stuff and uh, um, how many centimeters and kilograms and then they have space if, and then they have space for you to write down how you're feeling and what you're doing in that week so week by week I write down these uh, details and then they have some uh, other special spaces where they make uh, different inquiries you know every week like who you told what were your cravings your side effects and um, your dreams and stuff like that so you can write all this stuff down here and it's really like pretty and colorful it is something cool to have and I think it is a really nice in the future you can look back to it and even show your kids so I think that's great I would recommend you to have something like that maybe you don't even have like to buy uh, something like this you can just get like a, a white notebook and write things down if that's easier for you and yeah so that's something I recommend you to do because we have this impression that we're going to remember all the details forever but you know guys this is not how things work in the future there's just so much new things going on and we're gonna eventually forget these little details that are so cool right now um, yeah so I think that's it uh, I think it's a bit of a long video but if you stay until here thank you very much if you're pregnant too let me know in the comments below uh, how many weeks you are if you had the same situations as myself of it, it is completely different let's share this experience this is a wonderful time and uh, I just can't get tired of talking about babies and pregnancy and it's just marvelous to be in this situation so here it is my baby baby boy okay so here is a belly shot so bear in mind i'm 24 weeks <laughs> right now so i'm doing a late uh, first trimester update i will insert a picture of me on my first trimester here so you can have a look on how my belly was looking like by that time bye